let's graph another rational function, shall we? Yeah. I should say sketch. Sketch. We're just doing a loosey-goosey yes. sketch here. Sherlock Holmes moment. I'm going to collect my evidence so that I have a sense of what this looks like. Mm. Here we go. X-intercept. Of course, as we know, the X-intercept is where the graph touches the X, intercepts the X. So my Y value is zero there. All right? Can I just temporarily throw in a zero here? Absolutely. As we've discussed, the only way for a fraction to produce a zero is for the numerator to produce that zero. All right? So if you want to think algebra, you can multiply both sides by x plus 2, or you can just do the leap of logic that I just did and say, all right, for this to cross the x-axis, the numerator must equal 0. Hey, that's a quadratic. I'm going to factor that little guy there. Not too horrible to factor. Plus 4 minus 1. How am I looking? That looks terrific. So negative 4 and 1 are the x values that produce a y of 0. Therefore, those are my x-intercepts. Yes. X-intercepts makes the top 0. Yeah, yeah. got it. All right, so let's go ahead and plot those. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it crosses the x-axis right there. Notice y is zero. It crosses the x-axis right there. Boom. Yeah, I like Ready. it. Ready. Yeah. I'm going to erase this little guy here. OK, y-intercept, of course, is where it crosses the y-axis. Any point on here will have an x value of? Zero. Zero. So let's just go ahead, go back to my function, and imagine zeros in for all these x's. 0 squared plus 3 times 0 minus 4, 0 plus 2. That's looking like a negative 4 divided by 2, um, or a negative yeah. 2. Negative 2. OK, that's the y-intercept, where it crosses the Wow. So this is we've been doing this yeah. for every rational function. Yeah. This is there's nothing new here. No. Nothing new, right? Nothing You're not new. doing anything new. Nothing okay. New. Right. Got it. Are you thinking there's going to be something new? Well, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, they're making a whole new video here. I mean, I think there's some kind of something new must okay, be happening. Well, All right. You let me know when we get to something okay. kind of new. All right. Vertical asymptotes. We're looking to see where this function does not exist. Yeah. It's where is it like undefined? We talked about the domain. Where is this undefined? Sure, it's undefined when the denominator equals 0, negative 2, boom. This function does not exist at x equals negative 2. Hey, does this function exist for every other x value? It does. It does. So it must exist on the right side of that vertical asymptote and on the left side, but not on it. You can't cross vertical asymptotes. That's correct. All right, so vertical asymptote at y equals x, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, at x equals negative 2. I know okay. what you meant, Ms. Stewart. Thank you. It's all good. Woo! That was scary. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. This might be the new thing that you're talking about. Ah, I see. Up till now, we've been talking about what are the horizontal asymptotes, but now I'm giving you another option. Horizontal or slant asymptote. Right. So remember, the horizontal asymptote was always looking at end behavior. So let's look at the end behavior of this. End behavior, we're going to look at the powerful guy on the top, the controlling term. As I'm plugging in really, really big x's or really, really negative x's, I think we'd agree that x squared is most powerful. On the denominator, the controlling term is the x. Hey, x squared divided by x is x. x. So as my x gets bigger and bigger, what's going to happen to my y? It's also going to get bigger? It's going to get bigger and bigger. As my x gets more and more negative, what's going to happen to my y? It's going to get negatively big. <laughs> that works for All me. All right. Hey, I've got a slant asymptote situation here. Right. Yes. So we haven't sketched them before with slant asymptotes. And that's because up until now, the only ones we've sketched have had denominators with with bigger exponents or the same exponent right. as a numerator, but I see. So up till now, our right. end behavior has always been some constant. Right, so if it was like x squared over 3x squared, it would then it would just be 1 third. Yeah. Or if it was like x squared over x cubed, then the bottom is bigger, it would be 
zero. zero. But now the top is bigger. Mm. And we've, we've kind of looked at like what that looks like actually. We yeah. know that like if, if, uh, if it was x cubed over x squared, what would we get then? I have no idea. I just kind of blanked out of what you're saying. Oh. <laughs> so if we had like I'm an just x. I'm kidding. If okay. we had x cubed. The Stuart, really. Over. Right. If we had x cubed over x, uh, over x, let's say. Let's yeah. do that. And then we kind of divided out our x's. We would end up with an x squared. The end behavior would look like a parabola. Yeah. I see. Or if it was x to the fourth over x, we'd end up with an x cubed. It would look like a cubic. It would look like a cubic. But this one is x squared over x, so it's going to be some kind of linear function, but we want to find out exactly what that linear function is, yeah. right? And how are we going to find exactly what that linear function is? Oh, long division. We're going to do our polynomial Absolutely. long division. All right. So the only time you have to do this long division business, I know I, I kind of said this already, but this is kind of confusing to students, yeah. and me too. The only time you have to actually do this formal long division business is if the exponent on top is bigger than the exponent on the bottom. That's right. Because otherwise, you're just going to get a constant, right. 2 or 0 or 1 half right. or something. But hey, if you like doing polynomial long well, division, I do. you can always do it. Because we've really, actually, we've really been doing it already. We've yeah. just, if, it, if you just end up with a constant, you don't have to, you know, right. just kind of do it in one I shot. Have, I've had students in the past who just say, hey, I really like that polynomial long division. I'm always going to do it. And You'll it end works. up with your horizontal asymptote you or will. a slant. So you might will. as well just go you for it. You might as well. Here I go. So remember the way we talked about this, the x, we only look at that x and ask ourselves, x times what equals this x squared? x times x. We'll do that. Now I take that x, multiply it by x. x times 2 plus 2x, and I subtract. By design, those things go away. Boom. 3x minus 2x gives me my 1x. Bring down the next little guy. Okay, here I go. I'm again looking at that x, saying x times what equals x? Heck, just times 1. That's not that bad. 1 times x is x, and 1 times 2 is plus 2. Subtract that whole shebang. x minus x by design is gone. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Am I done? You are done because x does not go into negative 6. That's your remainder and I mean that can tell you some information about the function but it's really not relevant right for what we're doing. Right. Is that right? That is right. Okay. So my horizontal, sorry, my slant asymptote is going to be y equals x plus 1. And I kind of, I kind of like this because what this means is this function basically is going to look like the line x plus 1 when my x's are big or really, really mm. negative. It's not going to be exactly a line because there's a remainder. Gotcha. It's kind of like when you have 5, you know, 5 divided by 3, well, that's 1 and a little bit. It's about 1, right? It's, that's actually closer to 2, but you know where I'm going. I know where you're going. Okay. So I am going to graph. Do you think red will show up? I think so. I'm going to graph my slant asymptote of y equals x plus 1. That has a y-intercept of 1, okay, and a slope of 1, lots of 1s, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. So let's just graph that slant asymptote. Boom. That looks beautiful. Okay. And now I'm ready to roll. Now I'm ready to figure out what my function looks like. I'm going to erase this so I have room. Okay, so as you pointed out before, that vertical asymptote separates this into kind of two regions, this region to the left and this region to the right. Okay, so let's look at this region to the right. I can either be down below the slant or up above the slant. Well, this part is pretty clear because look, I've got those two points. So I think I can just connect those. As my x is getting bigger, I know that my y is approaching that slant asymptote. I'm not doing a great job. Well, so you don't actually have graph paper there. It's a little rough, but I mean, you know. Paper. But we're getting the idea. You get the there. idea. Okay, as my x approaches negative 2, 
my y value is approaching negative infinity. I'm basically getting closer and closer and closer to that vertical asymptote. All right, now let's go over in this region. I could either be below that slant asymptote or above. Hey, pretty nice. I have a yeah, point. Got to hit that point. Got to sure. hit that point. So I know it has to get closer and closer and closer to that vertical asymptote there. And I have to get closer and closer and closer to the slant. And again, my picture is really, really bad. Gosh, it's Yeah, horrible. it's looking a little funny, Stuart. I don't know. I it's mean, that's... really, really crazy. So I just didn't uh, have very, very much to scale here. I mean, that's it, certainly correct. It just looks a little, correct. scales a little funny. Yeah. It just looks a little crazy. That's right. But we you get guys you. get the idea. We get the idea. Right? Rope. We love it. And rope. Look more... My concavity isn't quite right. Yeah, it's a little flattened there. It's a little flat. It's all right. No, it's not all right. This is really bothering me. So let's <laughs> at least do this. All right. And we'll just get rid of our scale. It's still a little funny, but you're getting the, the idea. That looks good. Thanks, Stuart. <laughs> all right. Don't try this at home. No, do try this at home.